It's very rare for a game to be released, but then years later hit its peak number of players. Many games such as New World recently would release to hit an insane number of peak players on day one, but then it would slowly decline until it reaches a state in which it floats. Now that's a multiplayer game though, so what about Kenshi? Kenshi is a single player game with no multiplayer options as well as no updates. Other than odd patches, Kenshi has remained on sale and the same since release, so why is it that in the last month Kenshi hit its peak player count? Meanwhile, the game was released in 2018, but almost hit a peak of 11k players in February of 2023. That's a little over four years after the initial release date. So today, I'm going to be discussing that very topic and some reasons to back up why Kenshi has had a resurgence of popularity as of recent times. Whether you're a Kenshi enjoyer yourself, or maybe you're just curious about the game. If you're interested in how Kenshi hit a peak number of players years after its release, then this is the video for you. I thought this would be an interesting topic to talk about because as I've been looking at the Steam charts for Kenshi in the past few months, I noticed the game was being revived. Technically, the game was released all the way back to 2013 and it didn't hit a peak player count when it was released as the game was in early access and very few people knew about it. So technically, that means 10 years after the game's public Steam release and over 4 years after the official release of the game, Kenshi has managed to build a loyal and diverse fan base, attracting many gamers from different genres and playstyles. Kenshi released officially in December 2018 to an average of 3,500 players and a peak of over 6,000 at the time. The first reason why Kenshi didn't hit its peak player count just yet was because not that many people knew about it. For both players of the game and content creators in general, the game was very niche and different compared to everything else. At the end of the day, every game has its own economy in the game and in the real world. A majority of the games that do succeed tend to have a diverse amount of content creators. With building different sub-communities in the Kenshi community, it really does help the longevity of the game. Back in 2018 when I found the game rather close to its release date, maybe being a couple weeks off, I had not heard about this game or seen anything about it until one day when I saw a video either by General Sam or Seth. Either way, I remember watching both of their videos, Sam had a few and Seth had his review on the game. But unfortunately, other than them and maybe a few others, there weren't really a lot of reliable content creators for the game. Big creators like General Sam, Seth, and others would all be able to make their own videos on the game, which definitely exposed the game to possibly millions of people. And while General Sam would continue to return to Kenshi here and there, his channel isn't based off of Kenshi, and neither are the other big creators. So for a lot of people, Kenshi was just this one-off game that they saw one time and then that was it. When the game initially released, a majority of the playthroughs back then were all mostly unedited and with a slow pace of Kenshi, it makes for an awful viewing experience. And on the other end, a big part of a content that was missing was guides as well because there weren't really that many guides or tutorials for the game. And Kenshi is a really complicated game. Anyone that plays it knows that you can find a lot of people saying that the game is too hard to get into or they're lost and not sure how to progress in it. If you look at any game, the main thing you find outside of playing the game is other people playing the game. As of the past few years, it seems like Kenshi has had a lot more new creators focused on sharing their stories about the game and centered around the game. This will lead to people coming back to revisit the Wasteland of Torture as well as discovering it for the first time. I can notice it myself in my own videos as whenever the game goes on sale, usually my views for Kenshi videos or the guide will spike up with more people being interested into getting into the game. If you found Kenshi in 2018, you had to believe in the game and you had to really want to get into it because you didn't really know what you were getting into. Compare that to today where if you find Kenshi, you have the option to find years worth of player feedback, guides on ways to play, mods to use, and different tips to survive. With a single player game, it starts to feel lonely so of course people want to be a part of communities relating to things that they like and enjoy. And I feel like from YouTube to to Reddit, to Facebook, Kenshi has gotten a huge community and it's gotten really big in the past few years. The game is constantly going on sale as well almost every other month which definitely helps push it into new players eyes. And with the addition 
addition of YouTube Shorts feature and the platform pushing those, I believe this is helping people discover the game as well. For example, a few years ago on TikTok, there was only about five or six videos using the hashtag Kenshi. Compare that to now, where it's starting to build up and more and more people are expanding the game to other platforms. It's a really wild game, so when anyone sees it for the first time, the normal reaction is, what the fuck is going on here? Not many games are similar to Kenshi, so I can definitely see it standing out to a lot of people when they see them in shorts. Of course, leading to a sense of curiosity about the game and then getting more and more people into it. But video content isn't the only reason why Kenshi hit its peak player count, as there's some other factors involved, such as community content. Kenshi has remained the same since release, with very little changes done to the game. The only thing has really been changed is the amount of mods available for the game. It is really easy now to get lost in hundreds of mods. Over the last few years, Kenshi modders have added everything from new characters and races to new buildings and weapons and new factions. Even though the game is single player, for a lot of players that play with mods, there's always a sense of new content to explore or add to the game. I'm one of those players that loves to check out the workshop. Usually about once a week, I'll constantly go and I'm finding different random gems to use in my playthroughs. I think mods are definitely essential to a game sustaining its Itself. If you take a look at games like Fallout and Skyrim, they managed to have decade-long player bases who were constantly playing the games and modding them out until it was unrecognizable. This isn't a bad thing either, as for open-world sandbox games, you'd want players to have a possibility to play the game with a lot of different options and ways to do things. Sometimes one big mod release can bring a lot of players back into the game, like say with Fallout New Vegas and that one mod that wasn't really all that good, but point being, Kenji has a lot more mods now compared to years ago, which can definitely help pull in more players as well as more modders. Other than Kenshi itself, there's an approaching power that is even greater than Kenshi, and that is of course Kenshi 2. Since Kenshi 2 has been announced to be in development, it's led to a lot of people gaining interest in the first game as they wait for the second game. The game got announced years ago, I remember being really happy myself. To me, as someone who enjoys the world of Kenshi, similar to how people would enjoy Save the Worlds of Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. Knowing that Kenshi 2 is in development and that the world will continue to be expanded on tells me that Chris Hunt and whoever he hires to help with the game will be in it for the long run. If Kenshi was a one-off game without a second game in the works that's been heavily hyped, then I believe the community would calm down or likely not hit the peak we've seen. Knowing that Kenshi 2 will eventually release gives the players a reason to get more and more invested in already built world of Kenshi 1. The last year, there's been a lot of new Kenshi 2 news, as well as information as the dev team at Lo-Fi Games has expanded with more employees and more assets are being put together. This hype buildup will continue to pump Kenshi 1 with new players and key players returning. Kenshi is a very common game for people to spend hundreds if not thousands of hours in. Over the span of 4 years, I have over 600 hours of a game, and even with breaks for months at a time, I've always had a return to the game with excitement to explore this world and prepare for the next adventure. There isn't really a game similar to Kenshi, so that keeps on bringing back not only players but content creators to the game. And leading into the dev team itself, Kenshi 1 was pretty much built off of one person, which is amazing, but you can only imagine the potential that now an actual team is in order. Having a team in a studio being able to work on Kenshi 2 compared to just one person is going to make a huge difference. In the past few years, the success of Kenshi has made it so Lo-Fi Games can expand its workforce from one or two people to over a dozen. Of course, a majority of the work is being done for Kenshi too, but all of that work pays off with every devlog, where they show us some new cool character models or something else to hype up all the players. Along with people working on Kenshi 2, the Kenshi 1 scene has been more alive than ever. The official social media accounts for Kenshi have been really active the past few months on Twitter, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and I believe this helps a lot. People learning about the game from sources like Twitter or Facebook
Facebook definitely helps pull in an audience that might have not touched the game before. While I might find most of the games I want to play on a Steam front page or from YouTube videos, someone else might find it from Twitter recommendations or Facebook posts. So while the game has remained the same, the way they handle their social medias and interact with their community has gotten a lot better. And while the game won't really change other than new mods being added to it, in all as a potential Kenshi series, it's evolved a lot over the last few years. Everything from content creators to mods to ways to play the game to the dev team itself and the hype of Kenshi 2 all connects together in helping people get more interested in the game. It gives a lot of players reassurance knowing that Kenshi 2 is on the horizons. If you ever want to get invested or interested in the world of Kenshi, you now know that it's worth it because it's going to be expanded on even more. The game has a lot of lore already, but it could easily be fleshed out into a series. Trust me, I want to be playing Kenshi 4 in the year 2039, so I'm glad so many new people are getting into the game now. But what do you think? Those are my reasons for why Kenshi just hit its peak player count years after its release date. But what else could have influenced it? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like these video essay type videos, leave a like and let me know. I think this was pretty interesting to look at and kind of dissect. I believe the game could hit a peak even higher than last month as the hype for it is still built, but we're just gonna have to see. At very least, this proves to be an interesting case that single player game devs should study, as having a game reach peak popularity years after being released is very rare. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.